Hello viewers, four DIYers here, back with a tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to troubleshoot a relay. Now this is for a 12 volt application. Now some of the tools which I will be using in this video here, uh, one that's not being shown is a 12 volt power supply, which I'm using a small tractor battery for that, just mainly because it's uh, easily portable. Next, which I'll be using is a couple jumper leads here, one for the positive and one for the negative. Then we'll also be using a multimeter here. Now in order to determine if the switching portion of the relay is working, basically what we want to do is find out what the function of that relay is used for. Say if it's used for a fuel pump, it normally comes on when you do turn the key on. And what you'll find is when you do take the cover off your fuse box here, now this relay is out of the vehicle and I'll show you how this works uh, just by powering it up. But when you take that cover out, you normally hear a clicking sound. And you can go ahead and just put your finger on top of the relay like so and once you turn the key on you will feel it click or when you turn the key off you'll feel it deactivate then which would also make a sound. Now just to show you how this works here when I'm using a 12 volts source now I already know which side the coil is operational on and I will show you how that works in a minute but just to show you what the sounds like now it's on off on off. Now if you find that your coil is not clicking this could be a possible issue with the coil itself or it could be an issue that your circuit isn't getting power. So in order to test this here, basically I'm just testing the leads off my 12 volt source, but you would be checking this in the car on your fuse box and you will have spade connectors that do stick up which this plugs into. Now just to go ahead and check that, when the key is on obviously, we'll go ahead and we can see we have 12.52 which should be sufficient enough to power up the coil now. Now if you do find it is for another circuit that doesn't turn on with the key, say for the headlights or something, you will have to turn on the headlight switch in order to run power to the circuit. And once you remove the relay from the vehicle, they will normally have a wiring diagram on the side of them, how they work, which pin goes to what uh, internal part in the inside of the relay here. Now sometimes this may be located on the side or the top, it could be an engraved type lettering or it could even be just a printed text on the side of it. Other ones, they will have a serial number, which you can use to go online and look the uh, wiring diagram up for them. Now this one here is a fairly simple, common relay. Now basically what we have here is we'll have four different pins. Now they will also include more pins or less pins. It depends on the design of it. And you will have a switching device in it and you will also have a coil in it. Now some extra ones, they also include extra electronics in the inside, which uh, remove any voltage spikes which could be hazardous to the system. Now this one here also does include one of those as well as you can see on the side here and that is a resistor. Now basically here this one's a four pin relay. So what we have here is we'll have pin number 30, 87, 86 and 85. So 30 to 87 is for the switching portion of it and 86 to 85 is for the coil portion which does control the switching portion of it. So basically, for the switching portion here, this will be the high amperage circuit, and on the coil portion will be the low amperage circuit. Now going within reference to the diagram on the side here, as we can see we have four pins on the bottom here, and each of them are numbered, 87, 30, 86, and 85. So first what I want to start by doing here is testing the coil side of the relay. Now what we'll be using for this is a multimeter and set to the ohm setting. Now we're looking for a reading between 50 and 120 ohms which tells us the coil is functioning correctly and it is in good working order. Now the larger range is dependent because you will have different size coils as well. So what we'll do here is going with the 85 to 86 we'll be testing those terminals here. Now just using your probes what we'll do here is just determine what the current ohms is just between the probes here so we see you have 0.7 so next what we'll do here is we'll go to 85 86 and we have 83.1 ohms which tells us that our coil is functioning correctly now as for the switching portion of the relay now you will have two different types of switching types of relays. Now one will be normally open, the other one will be normally closed. Now the one I am using for an example here is normally open. So which means is when the relay isn't powered up or the coil doesn't have any power going to it, that will mean the switching device on it is normally open, therefore there is no power going to the other circuit it does control. Now for the opposite, that means with a normally closed circuit, there is always power going to it, but then when the relay or the coil is powered up, then it opens the circuit, therefore no power. Now with this one here, we can see both pins 87 and 30 do power that switching portion. And we will see that there should be 
no connection here when we do test these pins. Now if you do have a relay that has been, say the contacts have welded themselves together, then you will find that this will be a closed circuit. So we'll be looking for a zero ohms reading. So using pins 87 and 30, as you can see, there is no reading here, therefore the circuit is working correctly. Now to test the relay once it's powered up here, now I've already added the 12 volt power supply to it, and you can hear an audible click once that's done. Now with this being a normally open relay, basically what we should see here is we should see a closed circuit when we do the test on the pins on the bottom side for the switching portion. And can, we can see there that there is a fairly good reading and there isn't any really dirty contacts because we do have roughly about the same reading once we touch the probes together. Now if you are finding a bit of a higher resistance there, possibly what happens is that the contacts have arced a little bit and they don't have proper contact in the inside there. Now if you do find that you still don't have a reading there, then the relay will be faulty. Now with a normally closed relay, this will be the opposite process. Now with some relays, if you do find they are working incorrectly, now you can go ahead and open them up here. Now the one I do have on the left side here does have a molded case on it, so you can see the top side and the bottom side will be epoxied together, so therefore it'll be fairly hard to open. Uh, there's a possibility. If you do find that you are having improper readings on it, which does point a finger at the relay that it is not working correctly, you can go ahead, open them up, and then even just clean the contacts up if it's a contact portion that is faulty on it. If you do find that the coil portion isn't working, then you do have to go ahead and replace the relay then. But you can go ahead, open them up, and sometimes jumper them over to see if they do power up the circuit again and everything does work correctly. Now again, if you do have one of these molded cases and you do find that the relay does work after, it won't be sealed off to the exterior elements, therefore you'll have issues most likely down the road, so it is a good idea to go ahead and replace the relay. Now on the one I do have on the right side here, just to show you, I've already popped the snaps open. It will have clips inside the case as you can see around there and it does go around. So you can pop this open with a screwdriver and just to show you what it looks like in the inside there, you can see we do have access to everything in the inside. Now just going on the top side here, just to give you a better view, we do have the coil here which does power up and we also have the switching device on the opposite end here so just to go ahead and push it with my finger this one is a normally open circuit now if you do find there is issues with the switching portion of the circuit there so there will be the contacts right in there what you can do is you can go ahead and clean those up with some sandpaper now the sandpaper which is intended to be used for this which won't have any issues on the circuit is a non-conductive or aluminum oxide sandpaper now once you've cleaned them up there you can then go ahead and use a little bit of contact cleaner and just clean the any of the remainder dust out of there and go ahead and check to ensure that the circuit is working correctly again. Now just to show you how the relay does work when I do apply power to the circuit and when the case is off of it, and then this relay does operate at a normally open position. Now just to show you what a more complicated relay looks like, we do have actually two relays, separate relays in the inside here. So we'll have a coil here, a coil there, and we also have switching devices on each of those coils. Now this one doesn't come with a wiring diagram on the side of it, but it does come with a serial number which we can look up to determine the wiring diagram for how this does operate. And you can see on the bottom side here, we also have many more pinouts as compared to the one I showed you previously. Now with this one also, it does come with a plastic case on the top side which we can remove. You can see the clips on the bottom side here so we can't actually access it without destroying it and therefore there is a possibility of repairing this one. Now with this one also, it does operate on a normally closed circuit on both those relays. So what can happen here is once the coil is powered up, it opens up the circuit then and therefore turns off whatever it is operating. Now just to show you how this circuit does work, when I do apply a power to that one coil here, now this is the coil on the bottom side here, I actually have the relay upside down just the way I have my wiring set up. So just keep an eye out here, the switching device is right there. And just to show you when I do turn it over there, hopefully you get a little bit better view, just look right in the inside there. So this concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.